Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Zeddy, head coach of the esports program here at Keanu, located in Fort McMurray, Alberta. And today, I'm joined by a community caster, Angel, who will be supporting us on our first ever Valorant stream of the season. Angel, thank you for joining me on the broadcast today. It's Angel, I've done some collegiate casting uh, across NA, and I'm glad to be joining Keanu for their season opener. For Valorant, it's gonna be super exciting. Uh, before we get into the series, I do have a couple questions, Eddie, about our new team for Keanu. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let's just get right into it. Are there any players specifically when we're watching this opening match against the Colorado School of Mines uh, to look out for? If I'm a new viewer, if I'm new to Keanu, if I'm an incoming first year, is there any players I should be looking for to be like, this is the guy to watch this season? I, I mean, you're asking, you're asking the wrong guy that question because I'm pretty biased and I want to say watch all of them. But uh, I think it is important to note that, um, you know, our roster this year is a little bit different than last year. For those of you that might be returning to the stream that are familiar with Keanu, um, you might recognize some names. You will see returning favorites Savo and Senja from last year as well. Savo, one of our program's uh, oldest veterans who's been here since the program was founded in 2021. Uh, and Senja, who joined the team last year uh, as well, previously played initiator and has now moved into the Sentinel role to make way for our three new recruits joining the team this year, Bondo, Chris M, and Tiny Valorant. Now, all three of these new players are some very strong additions to the roster, and they're players that I've had the absolute pleasure of getting to work with so far. <coughs> Excuse me, as we uh, have gotten into the season here, um, and I guess a quick little introduction on the three of them. Bondo is a Tier 2 player from out in Ottawa, Ontario. Um, has some previous experience with some academy level teams, including FaZe Academy. Um, is pretty uh, well acquainted with the VLR. If you if you're familiar with VLR, you you can look him up and, and get some get some info on him there. Uh, Chris M is a ex professional player out in Asia Pacific region. He's a ex Filipino professional player um, uh, for Valorant and I believe Counter Strike as well. Um, so another strong addition to the program. And lastly, Tiny came all the way from the United Kingdom where he was the number one faded, uh, rated Fade player in the UK 730 RR peak um, and will now be playing Fade and other initiators here for the Keanu Huskies. So definitely some new faces to get to know and some old returning favorites to love as well. Yeah, so that's super interesting. I think it's going to be super exciting. Uh, did, you, did you mention the IGL and who the IGL uh, is? Oh. That's a good point. I mean, as far as team comp composition goes, as far as team composition goes, sorry, they're asking me if I'm R in production and chat, and I definitely am ready to get started with this game. Um, our IGL for our team currently right now, we do a little bit of a mix and match. We try out some different things. Um, but uh, typically, you'll see Bondo on that IGL role. Um, and you're going to get to see a little bit of his IGLing experience right now as we jump into the game and see how that composition forms. Uh, we are on ascent for our first map against the Colorado School of Mines in tonight's NACE Star League game. And I'd love to hear from you, Angel. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, how the Ascent meta has changed uh, since some of the recent Jet and Omen changes? Well, I think that the first thing that you're seeing is off the bat, uh, we're not seeing the loud comp. I, in, in either case, uh, for both teams, uh, we see Keanu going more along the lines of switching out the Omen for the Astra, which can be really good. We've seen super powerful utility come out from the Astra. I think there were a couple Astra changes as well um, that might make her more or less valuable to teams, depending on how you want to play. And then also coming in on the CSM side, we're seeing a change from Jet to Phoenix. Yeah, that's super interesting. That Phoenix change is definitely a, a, a unique change. It's not a pick that I've seen a ton of on this map. Um, and it's something I'm gonna be very curious to see how that uh, changes the way that you approach the map. You know, they're sticking with the Omen uh, as well. And we know Omen can do some very funky things on this map. You have, um, you know, some very effective smokes down mid where you can really lock down some key portions of the site. Um, but really that teleport comes into play in a lot of really creative ways on this map. Um, so that versus Astra, I, I think it's really gonna be interesting to see how you know, one team takes advantage of all the crazy shenanigans that Astra can pull uh, versus the classic Omen and, you know, relying on what's true and what's comfortable um, and that known factor there. Yeah, absolutely. As we're getting into this pistol round here, oh my goodness, Savo immediately traded out by O on CSM. We're seeing kind of just a general A main take. Uh, Astra's immediately pulling back that star. I think she knows 
to some degree that we are seeing just overall high presence from a main bondo chris m on the site this kind of immediate rotation from Keanu away from the B, this might be what CSM is looking for. Now they're going to start probing out mid. Something that's going to be super important here, especially on the attacking side, is going to be that Phoenix. Uh, the last time I remember Phoenix being played at all on Ascent was by EG back in 2022. And it's super key. You're going to see this Phoenix try and farm up those ult orbs super quick and just play off that running, the, the run it back a lot. But now we have CSM looking in towards tree. Chris M takes the contact. Puts down the star. Do we see a nebula? I like Swing. that little poke damage from him. It's good to get some damage down there. And I think Keanu has done a good job of reading out these CSM movements as Tiny actually finds a kill on the A site and another spam kill through the smoke. Bondo and Tiny doing some serious damage now to CSM. As Oosh chilling on two, two HP. Chris M will find blue core and he'll find a third or a second rather I should say onto Oosh and that will be the round going the way of the Keanu Husky. He's only losing Savo off that initial trade. Yeah, and I mean, that's super, that's going to be super important for Sabo just to get those, those knives online now that it is an 8-point ult. Uh, KJ is now at a 9-point ult too, which oh my is going to be super interesting uh, for Senja to play off of, especially for the retake. Uh, we're seeing, again, this kind of half mid, half A setup. Are we going to see Chris M and, Sen and Sabo lean towards A? No, Sabo's going in for a mid peak with this Marshall in towards Tiles. Let's see what happens as we go into this anti-eco here. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting setup here. I think the reason they're pushing through Cat so much on this Phoenix, I mean, you have that stun, that flashbang that can really kind of take complete control of Tree. And it seems to be how they're playing. The Savo finds one, nearly finds the second with the flick. That's going to be the body shot for him. And Bondo just absolutely farming CSM or Diggers. And that's going to be a quick and easy second round for the Huskies. Yeah, and I mean, you're only losing that Marshall there uh, for for Savo, so he might even have enough. He could really justify here yeah. just buying a, a Vandal and yeah. just start farming B main. You have you have the ability to full buy, but it looks like he is just going to go light with the Deagle um, the Sheriff, I should say. Sorry, I got my CSGO terms on me. He's going to have that Sheriff and that Light Armor and be able to go into an op on round four, and that's going to be very difficult for CSM to come back from. Um, but they are now on the full buy. They have the advantage, and the Huskies are going to be looking to bonus again with this two-man A setup. Yeah, definitely super interesting. But again, you're seeing that Phoenix lurk towards the A main side for CSM. And that's just because it's generally seen as more favorable for the attackers to get that A orb as compared to that B orb. Because, you know, the Sova with the dart and the spam with the Ares. Savo takes a quick peek down to tiles, doesn't find anything except for a little bit of a tag onto CSM's KO. Yeah, I actually really like this setup from Keanu where you have Savo taking that early peak tiles. And, you know, if you're CSM, you might not be expecting that second man hiding tree. When you come out, you're going to be you're going to be peeking, um, you know, towards that window uh, and you're not really going to be paying attention to that doorway. So having that nice little kind of bait crossfire setup um, and Chris already deep into wine already. So some very solid a control from the Huskies, um, but they have conceded mid and it looks like CSM have identified that that is the weak point on the defensive setup right now as they're crashing four players into mid right now. Yeah, this is definitely going to be on Senja and Chris M, or not Chris M, sorry. Tiny. Uh, Senja, yeah, Senja and Tiny to really work through this. And I think you have to, if you even want a chance of winning this bonus round, it's going to have to be one from each of them. Senja immediately with one in the back step for Bondo. Huge! Able to combine with Senja to pick up Oosh from CSM. And now it's just, I miss her and CSM's KJ. Chris M immediately lurking through Finding this flank, I miss her. At basically one HP one found. Lotus able to take one, but as for a bonus round, this is huge. Three alive for Keanu. Upgrades coming in. There yeah. it is. Some that's, vandals, some phantoms. That's three alive, and that's three guns going the way of the Huskies that they don't have to spend money on. If you check the creds right now, you can see Bondo and Tiny both sitting on 5,000 creds going into round four. And already CSM going to call a timeout. We're going to switch back to yeah. the caster's desk so we can get a nice little look at us <laughs> while we get ready, set up for the stream, uh, waiting for that game to come back. And man, oh man, this is an early, fast, and aggressive start for the Huskies. Yeah, I mean, the Huskies really went in big here. This is exactly what you want to see from an eco round. A uh, quick rule of economy for those who are a little bit new to Valorant. 
uh, getting three alive, ending ending any round and winning it with three people alive is going to be huge for your economy because that means you only need to drop two weapons or you only need to invest in two weapons. So having not only three people alive on the side of Keanu, but also being able to upgrade all three of those rifles means that not only did you win the bonus, you're not you don't have to buy up anything either. Uh, you really only have to invest into two rifles. You're you're gonna be like super set for presumably like the next three rounds of the half on yeah. the economy. You've got a ton of money to work with, and it means that you have the room for error. But right now, it doesn't really seem like the Huskies are taking much space in that room. They they're they're playing pretty pretty impeccably on the defense, and I'm really liking some of these reads. Uh, I think that last round was really critical, and that last round was Bondo making that hard read that mid was the space that the Ordiggers pushed through and finding that fast flank and being able to take down those two kills. A Savo already coming up big with the Operator in that first trade there. And he looks like he might try to push the smoke here with the dash. It's a little aggressive, but he's going to try. He's going to get the flick. He finds one. And Bondo gets the refrag, so he's going to be able to trade out onto Lotus. And already so many bodies dropping. One shot goes down, and that's a three for one round or three for two round for the Huskies, I should say, as they go 4-0 now. Big op kills for Salvo to start things off. Yeah, that's obviously like immediately what you want to see from this op coming out on Savo on the jet. It's it's kind of been put into question about whether or not Jet is still going to be the primary opper on a lot of maps, especially with a lot of these nerfs. But it's good to see Savo starting strong, playing well. That's uh, that opening pick is exactly what you want to see. Yes, it was an anti eco on the side of Kiano, but still, I mean. Deagles are basically vandals if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean an operator on an anti eco is a pretty big like slap in the face. It's a, it's a, it's not really easy to kind of deal with or, or 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 mess with, and especially when you're putting that in the hands on Jet on ascent. Like this is really the map where you just let Jet cook with an operator. And I really appreciate Bondo spending all of that extra money he's got and dropping an operator for Savo to keep the dream alive. Yeah. That's a that's Look a very how deep from Savo him. is. Yeah, this is crazy. He's like straight in their spawn right now. That dash timer is no about to dash. run out, but I think he has the read on this. He's gonna find one. Oh, nearly finds the double. He's gonna take down one in blue core with a very quick trade back. That's a nice shot from him. And they are actually gonna be able to take the operator. I don't know. I don't think they will though. They're probably gonna chill with the rifles. And it looks like they will leave that operator in fact um, for the Huskies to try to reclaim. Nice shots Bondo from Lotus as well. Mid. Yeah, Bondo on that swing mid. Trying to get the re-clear. Lotus was just posted up. Really good awareness out of Lotus. As we're looking here, Senja popping the swarm grenades to prevent anyone from pushing out B. CSM's gearing up for this execute. Are they calling a gamble? You should run. Keanu calling the gamble. Oh, but that ult. Yeah, I think I think what that was was Senja recognizing that they do have the KJ ult and that if they are gonna go for this B execute, that he needs to give himself enough space so he doesn't get trapped. Uh, onto site or in boathouse. Um, so good awareness from him to kind of accelerate his rotation. They are going to try to get some wall bang damage on to Oosh, and they will take a little bit. Uh, Lotus pulling down from up top, from mid. Lotus will get traded out. Senja now in the 1v2. They have sights on him with the dart, and unfortunately that wall bang is going to drop him. Oosh taking that kill, and that will put the ore diggers onto the board. No clean sweep tonight. Yeah, I think it was definitely super risky play out of Savo to just all the way pushed down a main but i mean when you're 40 up and you know your jet is feeling it i get it yeah, yeah you know, i mean it's there. it's an interesting operator play for sure like you you know you're buying that weapon to hold long distance space and then you're putting yourself right kind of in front of enemy lines at that point i might as well just bought it buy him an o odin and let him cook you know what i mean like just yeah <laughs> let him have some fun if he's watch gonna go that this, deep watch for this play out of chris m here in a main uh Again, you're gonna wanna see this Phoenix. If I had to guess, you're gonna see the Phoenix try and push up A main, go for a quick little run it back into the site, human drone. We have this interesting B setup out of Savo and Senja. Savo playing the AWP, Senja ready to just sit there as, as the bait. Gonna be super interesting, but CSM playing a super slow default towards mid and A, this catwalk. It's catwalk crawl, as you'd like to call it. Yeah, it, it kind of almost seems like on B side, they're actually baiting the operator and then they're tucking Senja into that corner to trade. Tiny has awareness on this flash, finds one. That's a great oh shot from Tiny. God, Tiny. Oh my area. goodness gracious. And these last two players for CSM, one HP. Does Tiny get this? Oh, that's a nice shot oh. from Blue Core. I have to say, you know, that guy is shooting right now. He's sticking yeah. some good shots. 
Ukor is, he's, you know, let him cook, as the kids yeah, say. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. And it's not just it the kids me... that say it, it's me that says it too. Yeah. Nice shot Oof. there from Senja. That's going to clean up the round. Going to trade out for that nicer Vandal skin. Upgrade upgrade those colors. Extend the lead to 5 to 1. That off. We're carrying over that off. That's going to be super key. You know, something that that is going to be important is the ult economy right now for CSM is in super big favor, right? Mm -hmm. Three huge ults online. We really only have Chris M with his ult on the side of Keanu. <clears throat> you know, I kind of would like to see maybe some pushes, more, not pushes necessarily in aggressive manner, but just to keep control over these ult orbs. Oh, here's that setup again. Oh, there's the off. Senja with one. Senja two. finds two. I miss her with a good shot for the third, or for the trade, rather. And is able to upgrade here, but Chris M. Oh, he gets one. Does he expect the other? Oosh! Fires. Misses. Chris M. Does he get it? Ding through the wall. Oh! Barely. But Bondo will find the trade immediately. Good shots from Bondo as well. They'll close that one out. Six to one lead for the Tuskies. Yeah, I mean, just overall, super dominant CT side, very disciplined out of Keanu. I, I, Sabo has to be in the conversation here. This has just been super excellent out of him, especially when you're talking about, in the, you know, the new meta with Jet. I was kind of expecting to see something really interesting come out from CSM with the, with the Phoenix, but it feels like right now there hasn't been much in the way of, like, room being taken it just feels like very like five man let's do this let's do that yeah, i haven't seen I that ultimate mentioned. used once i don't think actually yeah i feel like if you're on the side of there's the ko ult for csm of course as we've said it you know four ults coming in here i feel like we need some there's the human drone or the run it back but senja just shutting it down man tiny and senja are doing so much work on this defensive side especially on b Senja and Bondo able to get traded out, and Tiny with the swing! 1v1, duelist v duelist. I miss her versus Sabo. Nice shots from Sabo. Sorry, wow. sorry, I got a, that was a, <laughs> I was just waiting to see that one play out, and uh, I was very excited with that outcome. That was a, a very strong round to start off, and it got a little bit messy towards the end, but they managed to clean it up. A nice little shot, off shot from Sabo to close that round out, and Man, what a bloodbath on, on that B-side there, on that B-side entrance. Yeah, I mean, that just that just reminded me of like, well, you know what? We have KO, who basically has Phoenix ult, and we have Phoenix, who basically has Phoenix ult. So let's just <laughs> use them and try and rush the site. But man, Senja and Tiny just really able to just collapse onto that push and make it almost irrelevant, right? Like, you use two ults there and... It's just been one for one trades. Super good protocols. And Savo again with these openings on the off. Ooh, good shots from I miss her, but it doesn't find the kill. The flash comes around the corner, but Tiny will find the trade. Drone tagging on the Odin. Havoc in A main. Just able to consistently get two here. Tiny, one HP, gonna back up. It's on Oosh and Blue Core. 2v3. Sheriff only. I hope they've been training those headshots. They got their DMs in, you know, because you got to wonder what's going through the head of CSM right now in terms of just, you know, what, what the, what the mental's Ooh. like. Oh, Senja. Destroyed. He knows where the second is. He knows where Oosh is. Does he get it? Oosh. Oh, 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 there it is. And he'll he'll find it eventually. It took his he took his time with it, but he got there eventually. He's playing with his food. That's right. That's, that's right. That's what that is. That's right. And it's a great round from the Huskies as well. I mean, you start off, you have this really aggressive mid play where you have Chris taking that early swing, relying on Tiny for that trade. Um, he gets that first shot off, and and Tiny as soon as that trade comes up from Tiny, I believe Thanks. Bondo swung out from A to support after Savo got that first kill, and you kind of just crunch the enemy in their spawn, and you take away so much space from the ore diggers that they couldn't even leave their spawn that round. Yeah, I mean, just overall super well played out of Keanu. The trades coming in looking nice. Oh, there's the Hunter's Fury out for Keanu. Ooh. Oh, and Savo on the timing. That's such a huge opening pick. 
frees up a ton of space for the ore diggers for sure. They now know that that operator player is down on B, and you know Senja could try attempt to recover that op, but I think he's gonna be happy with the Phantom for now. Oosh. Sam reveals himself. Gets taken down by Blue Core. Tiny in mid. Needs to go huge to equalize. Senja able to get one in. Senja with two from this flank from mid. Three for the round. Does he find Blue Core for the four? Wow. Such good sense of timing out of Senja. Senja and Tiny. Again, the two like unsung heroes that we've kind of been talking about. Oh my about. gosh. Super song. Senja. Four on the round. Just these, these two absolute behemoths for Keanu. Senja going huge 16 in 10 rounds. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a performance to be proud of for sure. And and I mean that's he's madness. really he's really taken over as a in this new sentinel role as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream. Uh used to used to be an initiator player actually previously played a lot of KO Silva uh, for the team and is now rotated into this KJ and the occasional cypher pick as well and I think really just suits his style as a player you know he likes to find those those slow flanks he really likes to control the pace of the game control that space and you know sometimes you just find that timing and the scoreboard the scoreboard thanks you for it for sure yeah 100% I mean hey who said sentinels have to bottom frag right that's, that's right that's right. We're 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 changing narratives here at Keanu, for sure. For sure. But now we're looking in for this this mid play from CSM. Savo able to get traded out after finding a pick on the blue core with the off. Chris M here in time. It can get one. Oh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a rough duel. Chris M able to get one plus a tag. Oh my! Hondo, huge double kill. It's now on Ush again. Can he find anything? Tiny. <laughs> Tiny able to get the scan. Does he get the kill? No. Bondo finds it through the wall. 10-1 for Keanu. Last round I mean, I mean, Ascent is a defender-sided map, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. like the, yeah. that's that's the copium you're huffing right now. If you're an Ore Diggers fan, you're just trying to get through uh, how this first half is looking and 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 hoping, you know, that maybe things will switch around on the second half. But the Huskies are just playing with a ton of momentum right now, and you can tell they're really feeling confident in the way that they're approaching these rounds. Yeah, I mean, this has been, even even if CSM is able to get a second round here, it feels like like just been a bloodbath in favor of Keanu. Ult coming in towards Tree. No tags on that Hunter's Fury out of Oosh. Bondo, gonna hopefully try and lurk in towards main. Nope. Oh my god, Chris M. The trigger discipline. Patience. Oh, fight for Chris M. Oh my. 4K. Oh. I miss her. Oh, don't do it. Savo. Savo the shorty. Oh, no. Not like this. Guys. Okay. I miss her. All right. 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 <laughs> Let's take a second. Let's slow down. That was, uh, uh, Oh my gosh! I, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a timeout moment for sure. Let's uh, let's take a second, take a breather. That was absolutely chaotic. Wow! <laughs> you go from you go from the absolute spray down in cat from Chris M to four Keanu Huskies dropping within seconds, and a one v one left with the operator body okay. shot. That's the you don't see that round every day yeah. for we, sure. We, we gotta we we I think we're trolling a bit too much there, guys. Yeah, uh, let's. Let's calm down a little bit. Make sure we can close this out. 11 to 1. Super, super strong out of Keanu for that defensive half. Now we're looking at the offense. We're looking at I, I, it's of what I'd assume to be a B, a B play, right? You know, four players in towards B main on this attack side for Keanu. Pistol round. Yeah, and, and I think the B hit is a nice change of pace because oftentimes on this map, you know, a lot of teams tend to lean closer to that A, that cat push. Now, I, I wonder, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, do you think the presence of Astra versus the Phoenix in this game changes anything for the attack side? Like, how does that affect the attack dynamic on Ascent? Yeah, so obviously the Astra versus the Omen is like a, a common... Did, like the choice that teams make here on Ascent. Um, 
generally, I, I think that the only real attack dynamic that you're gonna see as a difference is you might see Astra be more on uh, the opposite side of the map doing some more extremity work so you might see four people in towards B ready to execute and the Astra's over lurking trying to find a timing in mid or A main but as of right now for Kiano it's just five in towards B and uh, is it a rush? Is that what we're just gonna see? Or are we just gonna see a, uh, a run it down? Why not right? I mean why right, not? Yeah, I mean if you're up 11-1 and you just you have Senja being a beast Savo immediately onto Lotus and please help able to find one onto Senja and I mean if that's the person if you can only get one you might as well try and get the top ragger right but Chris oh. again the trigger discipline from the controller goes hard and it's a 2v3 on this retake I miss her and blue core what can they get done tiny on these spots finds I miss her finds the head standing ahead found them uh, scans. Oh, but Blue Core able to get one. He's nothing but a head tapper. Tiny. One enemy remaining. Bondo. One v one. Oh wow! Oh, wow! That was a shot from my messer. And yeah, uh, I mean, that that's a <laughs> that was a that was a nice little quick flick running gun from him for sure. Okay. That was. A, a, a good recovery of the round. The Huskies had a really solid lead, but I think just took too much damage. And, you know, it, I mean, the headshots, when the headshots are flying, that's one thing. But when you're down at 22 HP trying to defend on site, it's, it's a much more challenging game to play. Yeah, I think if there's a story within that, it is definitely the story of HP, right? Uh, just tiny on like half health. Savo was at like a sliver of health. Can can they really can they really do anything? It's a pistol round, you know. It's, it's one body shot from a ghost that's able to take you down. It's it's kind of rough. So, love to see what they can get done. A force buy here for Kiano. I, I mean, I guess you know if you're up 11-2, able to find their way into the B site, super clean. Is it a is it a five v five retake? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a full on team kerfuffle here onto the b site and let's just look at the setup from the huskies you have savo and bondo leading uh towards stairs here looking to play aggressive you've got this double stinger from them i believe as well for those melee brawls and then as you mentioned chris m playing those extremities he does get spotted out by the dart here he's gonna be able to hold on from the side and and play that timing and that, as that gets savo that... two bondo gets traded out though chris m again through these smokes a smoke criminal and senja and Tiny, again, the two that we spoke so much on the defense half. Are they able to close out this force by Senja with the shots, able to get it? Is that 20? Is that 20 for the man? For uh, the I, I think we're at 18 right now, 18. Oh. Wow. So 18 in 14 rounds. What's that What's that KPR looking like? That's like a 1.3 uh, or something. Oh, jeez, right? don't make me do math. Uh, 1.3? 1. 1. 1.2? Yeah, no, 1.2 something, definitely. You, you had it. You had. It. I shouldn't have guessed. I'm now just embarrassed myself. <laughs> you had it spot on the money. Yeah, 1.29 KPR. So if you want to say 1.3, that works too. Yeah, we'll so, call it a 1.3. Let's do that. Yeah, I mean, wow. Sentinel is not slowing him down at all. And we're into this. Oh, that's 20. Play. That's the 20th for Senja. But super aggressive play out of TSM here. Tiny. Oh, almost got caught off. Chris M able to get one onto Oosh, but that is traded by Blue Core onto Senja. It's Blue Core with a stinger. What can he do? Chris M able to go into the site. Fakes the plant. Blue Core backs off with the ping. And now, again, these 3v2 situations. Seems like that is the name of the game. And we see Bondo here just kind of pumping out utility, able to get one onto Blue Core, but is also at 4 HP. And now it's all onto Lotus for CSM. Can't get anything done. 13 2 on Ascent. Wow. What a dominant showing out of Keanu. That's a, map. that's a phenomenal map to start off the season with. A 13-2 lead is definitely nothing to uh, nothing to be upset about. That's a that's a great way to start things off. And taking a quick look at the scoreboard here, uh, Chris M with the highest average combat score, but Senja, 20 kills to his name in the opening map. And 
you know let's see if we can hit 40 on the day we got another map coming up it is a best of three tonight uh the enemy team has asked for a quick break so we are going to be taking a quick five minute break before we jump into the next map um but well yeah we'll come back and we'll see if we can hit senja 40 on the day already a phenomenal start from him uh on that map on the kj and i mean as you said it doesn't really seem to be that the roll swap is doing anything to that kill uh to that kda he's uh he's still cooking regardless It'll be great. Well, we're going to cut to a quick break while the teams get set up for map number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more Collegiate Valorant after the break.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the stream. Keanu College versus the Colorado School of Mines Huskies versus Ore Diggers. My name is Shadi Zeddy Hanna, head coach of the esports program here at Keanu, and I'm joined by Angel, who's been casting with me today and been doing a phenomenal job. Thank you so much for joining me on the broadcast today, as we are going to jump into Haven. And Angel, if you don't mind, I'd love to get you started off, maybe talking us through some of these compositions. I'm seeing some some old favorites in the chamber getting picked up, which I haven't seen in a while, and I'd love to know yeah, your thoughts is, on that. This is super interesting. So we kind of have these kind of two opposite ends of the comp, the composition spectrum here. So on the Keanu side, we see the, the classic bread and butter, Sova, Breach, Astra, Jet, Killjoy. It's an old favorite. It was played a lot, especially this past year and this past season in the spring. The Breach, super common. But then on the other side, we see a double Sentinel comp come out from CSM. And that probably has to do with the fact of these Jet nerfs and just how <coughs> strong uh, Chamber is on the op now that Jet isn't what she once was. Uh, and of course, because you're running double sentinel with the KJ and the chamber, and you can only run one initiator, you're gonna run the sky. She's the best solo initiator in the game. Omen on the smokes as opposed to the Astra. Don't know how I feel about it on, on Haven, but it's certainly not bad. We'll see as we go into this pistol round. And the Husky's taking a very early push up of A. Savo is gonna try to find that first kill into his help, but that crosshair shooting at the kneecaps, not where you wanna be putting that on, on that first trade, and he will fall to the raise, but the nice trade comes back out, and a 4v4 now on site as the Huskies take dominant control of the A site. Yeah, I mean, just immediately super good aggression out of Savo, good trade on, good trade by Tiny, and now we're seeing this 4v4 retake come into play. There's the dog out for the sky of CSM. I miss her, able to get a huge shot onto Bondo. Chris M able to trade, gets one onto Lotus, Tiny, and Chris M. Senja able to get one. Chris M and Tiny able to close it out. That's another pistol for Keanu. And when you put that Breach player in Hell, like when you get that fast B, uh, A take and you have full control of Sight and you're able to deposit the Breach into Hell, it is so hard to push through CT onto Sight. Like without good Heaven control or a fast flank, it is so, so difficult to regain control of that Sight because you're getting, you know, you're getting hit with uh, the Aftershock, you're getting hit with the stuns, you're getting flashed to the wall and there's absolutely no counterplay to him when he's safe behind that Hell wall. It's just such a difficult setup to deal with. Yeah, 100%, but watch, during this round, we're gonna see this heavy mid-aggression out of CSM. Only the turret really able to kind of contest this C site. So, if I had to guess, you're gonna see either a full 5-on-5 five five retake, or you're just gonna see some orb denial out of CSM, making sure that Keanu can't build up those ult orbs really early. Chris M and Senja able to try and just farm up some ult orbs. Bondo able to get one. Chris M for four. I mean, that's about as clean as you can ask for. Yeah, I mean, they read the situation perfectly. They knew, okay, look, opponents are on eco. They're gonna try to force something aggressive. It's Haven, funneling down a lane probably isn't the play to make. And they're gonna come running down mid, so let's just take sight fast and make them, make them walk into us. And it's just the perfect read for a perfect round. Yeah, I mean, just super, super well done. Uh, I'm gonna kind of be interested to see what Senja can do with this frenzy now, especially when you had someone drop 20 kills in 15 rounds on the last map and you're putting him on the frenzy as opposed to, you know, even a Vandal. It's like, it's gonna be a little interesting, but of course, Savo in towards Garage Lotus, able to get that kill. Oh. Senja can't trade. Lotus will eventually go down at the hands of Tiny, and Bond was able to get one onto Oosh. Three on three. Tiny, plant the bomb. Or Bondo, plant the bomb, forgive me. And three. are they baiting out? Seems they're trying to bait out some peaks. And Chris M able to get one. Satchel to the face. <laughs> and that will be 50 damage stuck to his face. I, I, I knew that was an interaction. I don't think I've ever seen it happen. It's kind of funny looking at that satchel just sitting on your face, knowing it's going to explode and there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, Yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy. The wraparound through CT spawn to go plant it A. So, I don't think I've ever seen that one before. 
But remember what I was saying about this breach? I really feel like this is a big reason for why they're looking for these A plays, is they know that breach setup is super strong, and look exactly how CSM has to play. They have to flank, because if they try to funnel through CT into that breach while that breach is still alive, you're just gonna get burned with Util. And he makes the read, yeah. chucks the tremor down short, and Bondo watching that angle, CSM is running out of time to make a play here. And I think that's it, that's the save. It's been called. Honestly, the the mid rounding from CSM, I d felt kind of gamble to me. It didn't feel super safe. Bondo, can he get both? Does he get both here? Did CSM go do all that effort just to die? We'll see. Bondo able to escape the spike. Can he find blue core? No, but he is able to get the vandal. Wow. That's some nice timing there. Yeah, I mean. Super good, but you see this kind of mid round from CSM where they decide to push and, and re clear mid, uh, despite knowing that they had snaked through CT spawn. So I guess it was just the gamble that the people on Kiano would just decide to commit to C, but overall, it didn't really pay off. Yeah, see, and, and, and my theory on it, I don't think it was a re clear, like, I don't think that was the intention. I think the intention was can we get ourselves that wraparound so we don't have to deal with that breach in hell? And yes, you can get there, but can you get there with enough time to do anything is a different question. And I think, unfortunately, the timing did not pay off. And the Huskies, yet again, able to get a solid take of sight. Now on the A side, already two down for the ore diggers. Piano looks to plant back on A. Yeah, the the interesting posit here is going to be, can Blue Core get anything done? Able to get tiny, but Savo immediately trades and it's not looking too, too good for the side of CSM here. Savo able to get another kill onto Lotus. Can he get the fourth, or is it going to be Bondo? Able to find Oosh with a clean headshot. It almost felt like it was just, like, predicted by Bondo. It didn't even feel like that was a reaction. That was like a pre-fire. No, the, the game sense is just too strong. I mean, you've choked out every other angle. You know this guy is typically leaning mid-side. You know that their ability to rotate is limited and that that CT hasn't been working for them. And, you know, Heaven is kind of, kind of sort of the only place where you can expect him to show up. But just knowing when and where is just some insanely good timing knowledge. Yeah, of course. But now you're 4-0 up. And we did see CSM take their one round in the first half last map on this fifth round. So, you, are divided. you know, not saying it's going to happen, but it definitely could. But Lotus is immediately snuffed out on this B side as we see this take in from Kiana. Bondo, does he push through the wall? <coughs> no, he decides to plant towards the C link side of B. And it's a three on five. Look at this little garage take here, though, from Tiny. Gonna push in, follow behind that drone. He's got tons of space to work with now. He does get spotted out by the trip. And now that chamber with the operator has to be a little bit careful of that angle. Oosh, why are you crouching? And the headshot comes through from Savo. Savo walking into the aftershock, because why not? Yeah, I think it was just the decision as to op or not, but they decide to go against it. I think that makes sense. You know, again, those jet nerfs that I've talked about for the 18th time this series kind of just limits Jet's ability to be a super dedicated opper. And on the attack side, is it really worth it to take that risk when you're already up 5-0 and you're oh. dominating on rifles? Oh, definitely not. And I don't think the operator is all that effective on attack on this map anyways, but I do believe that... Uh, um, I miss her on the side of Ordiggers picked up an operator last round. At least it looked like that's what he was holding. Um, I didn't yeah. hear the alt sound go off. So losing that operator this early on in the game is definitely going to hurt that wallet just a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, if anyone can, if anyone can can recover from a from an economic loss like that, it would be the chamber, right? Yeah, it's really enough. gonna be on I miss her to build up that ult. Chris M spots out one on the flank, and I think. This round can come with a lock in for Kiano. I don't want to jinx or anything, but Savo pushing up garage here. Oh, oh with the knives. Chris I'm able to get Lotus anyways. Two. Second one onto I miss her. Savo finds one onto Pliz help. And now it is just Blue Core and Oosh on the flank. Blue Core able to find one onto Senjo. And Bondo and Savo just clean it up. Again. These anti-ecos are coming in pretty cleanly for Keanu. 
I just don't see them stopping anytime soon. No, they've, they've, they've got a really good read on the situation and how they want to play the rounds. Especially when you have this uh, this Breach Astra, you've got so many trap plays that you can operate um, with all of that util um, that these fast sight takes are just really, really starting to overwhelm uh, this slower pace composition from uh, from the ore diggers. I mean, they have the raise, but they also have the chamber. And it's I, I feel like it's difficult to play like an early aggressive play with the raise when you don't have any effective follow-up outside of that sky. There's just some some disjointedness in their composition build, I feel. Yeah, definitely. I don't necessarily think that there's a super big disjoint, but it could totally be that they're just not able to capitalize super well with these double duelists or double sentinel con. Sorry, oh. but of course, as we say that, Blue Core able to get a huge two frags, Lotus able to find one as well. And, you know, things might be able to be turned around for CSM on this defensive half. <laughs> I feel like on Haven, especially with the way that Ascent went, I, I feel like not to say that anything's mandatory but i feel like four at the very minimum is gonna be mandatory for csm but they seem to have a pretty comprehensive hold on this round it's gonna be on the backs of tiny and senja in a 2v5 tiny in his way through garage can he clear out please help i don't know if he sees it oh there it is the jump Senja spamming through. Please help him get one. Tiny with one. With two. Tiny, not the 1v5. Oh, oh. man. I, I, I like the idea, though. Like, I like the idea. I think I think once you throw out that stun, maybe you just commit to the shot. You try to find that third shot, and then once you have a second to reassess, you go back to the util. But, hey, it was a, no, it was a noble effort. We, we respect it nonetheless. 100%. And I think something that's important to note if we look at the scoreboard here as we are going into round eight is, you know, the the fact that Chris M is sitting here at 10 and 1. And even Tiny, right? Tiny was someone who, who did, he was the bottom fragger on that first map. But when you had Senja dropping 20, and if you looked at Tiny's assists, he had 12 assists on Ascent. That definitely means if you're an initiator and you're ending a... a 20 round game with 12 assists, so you're definitely doing something right. Sabo in towards this A site, Lotus able to get him through the smoke, but Fondo and Chris M able to trade Chris M with two. A 2v3 for the post plant here. The raised showstopper, not able to find anyone. You are divided! But look at Chris M's health here. This is gonna be super big. You really don't wanna see Chris M do anything too, too crazy. You don't want him to play too, too aggressive to then give CSM the opportunity to equalize the numbers here. I think the way that he's playing right now is perfect. Bondo in towards this graffiti area. Able to get the scan and Senja with the last two, 7-1 for Keanu. Yeah, that's a great round. I really like the use of the Astro Wall there to block off Heaven and to make um, that retake from CT all that more challenging. Um, I think it's a great use of the ultimate, and especially when you've still got four rounds to build it back up again and potentially uh, get a little bit more out of it. Uh, I think it's, it's exactly what you need out of that round. Um, and being able to kind of corner off uh, the rays in the sky and make it very difficult for them to to attack I think you really only give them that option of double crashing through CT and uh, as we've seen pushing CT into the Huskies on a is <laughs> Doesn't always work out the way you want it to Yeah, definitely does not go your way all the time, but These players on on Keanu, they're just having a day. They're having an absolute fantastic time with it the you know when CSM's top dragger is is five and seven, you know you got to be doing something right if you're if you're a husky. So it's going to be super interesting to see what happens in these last four rounds of the half. You know if if CSM can try and equalize here, maybe end it four eight five seven. You know, we could see you know a glimmer of hope for this next half, but the way it's going. Keanu's looking good, and this is an amazing opener to have. 
Yeah, it's a great way to kickstart the season. Um, for those of you that are, you know, maybe new to the collegiate esports scene, new to the Keanu Huskies, our Valorant team doesn't just compete in NACE, we compete in a bunch of different leagues as well. Uh, this year we're going to be looking at competition right in there. NACE on Wednesdays, as well as competition in the NECC on you Mondays, Red Bull Campus Clutch on Saturdays in the early fall, and then CVAL later in October when that gets started up again. So they've got plenty of Valorant coming up uh, on the schedule. So if you are a Valorant fan, you are a Huskies fan, you'll have plenty of Valorant to look forward to over the course of the semester. Yeah, and as we see, CSM immediately in with this plant on C, and Tiny is going for the hunt, able to get one. Chris M with two on the opposite side of the map, or not really opposite, but on the B site. Chris M <laughs> dodges Tiny's flash. Senja able to get his, and Savo gets his. Man, poor Bondo. You know, if Bondo there, I'm a little upset. I'm like, guys, where's my kill? Why can't yeah, I, I get a kill? I, I agree. I, I, I do think we have to give some respect to Bondo, but I think Bondo gets the enjoyment of knowing that he shot called a flawless round off of the opposing timeout. I mean, that's got to hurt the ego just a little bit. When you come back, yeah. you, know, you sit with your team, you're strategizing, you come back and you get 5-0'd, it's... It's tough. It's tough to recover from. And it's calls and plays like that that really shift the momentum in a game like Valorant. It is a very momentum-based right game. And, and I think just having that awareness as an IGL and knowing that this is the round where we need to make this play um, to really kind of just seal the deal in the game, is, is it just shows to his experience and what he brings to the team. Yeah, 100%. It's that veteran, it's that veteran seat coming in. Savo, again, able to get one through all the chaos of the Hunter's Fury from Bondo and Tiny's Aftershocks. And again, it's this A-take, super clean. Flashing Savo onto the angle. And it's, I miss her again on CSM side with this off, and it's just not able to find any engagements. And we're into a retake again. Look Seekers at this flank from Bondo, though. Look how fast he's oh, moving wow. on this flank from mid. Wow. Oh, and they don't check it. They don't hear him. It's just onto Oosh. Chris M with two. Bondo finally got his kill that he so rightfully deserved from that previous round. Just, I, I don't even, I feel like I'm speechless here, man. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really fast paced game. They're taking sight very aggressively. And I, something I wanted to comment on last round, I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Tiny did commit the ultimate on A as the solo A player for the fake. And that's why they were able to hold so many players A for that pinch. Um, it, I mean, that's just a, that's a crazy play, really. Chucking right? breach ult as a fake, like that's, that's kind of nuts, <laughs> I think. Just a little yeah. bit crazy. Definitely 100% when, you know, you have Chris, you know, it's Senja on map one with with 20 kills in 15 rounds, and now you have Chris M on, on Haven with 16 kills, now 18 kills, sorry, <laughs> on Haven in 10 rounds, or soon to be 11, but does get traded out, three on four, Tiny, oh no, pushes down long and gets clipped by Please Help. Savo, watching down long, watching this omen smoke, three on three retake. Bondo able to get numbers back in Keanu favor with a frag onto Blue Core. Savo with one. Does he get the second? No, gets traded out by Ush, but Bondo with the trade back. Ten to one as we get to the last round, round of the half. the half. And I think Keanu might be trying to go for it, a season opener, any percent speed run? I was gonna say, um, I'm pretty sure we saw another game pretty recently where the score was 10 to one on round 11 and somebody was top fragging with 18 kills. I feel like that feels pretty familiar to me. I, I wonder yeah. if we'll hit, see Chris M hit the 20 kill half as well, if you can get the, get the repeat on the round, but uh, uh, you know, at this point, it's just a mini game for them, for the Huskies. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think at this point, just bonus points. Senja with this Odin, able to tag up Oosh a little bit, get that damage in. Wow, that was, that was a full 100 bullets. <laughs> Dueling drones come in with the Sky Dog. Dude, Valorant's easy, just left click. Oh yeah, I'm, I mean, I miss her just left clicked onto Tiny and that's a huge opening frag if you're CSM and you want to get that second round on the board. But Savo just has A. This is it. They have the plant in. It's up to Pliz Help. Let's get this. No, Savo has that every day of the week. 
Yeah, that's good Stop crosshair it. placement, good awareness. I mean, you hear those big clonking boots and those big clonking footsteps, and you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah, Gone out. Yeah. Down goes I miss her. Dash into the smoke. Oh, and oosh. I'm pretty sure he was moving and shot at the floor, and the bullet sprayed upwards. That's uh, That was a Valorant moment for sure. Hey, listen. You got, you got Valorant in. And Bondo. Sending out the shot by Senja. Not able to find the kill onto Lotus. Oh, Bondo give him the 20. Oh, Bondo. Bondo, give him the 20. Come on, Bondo. Listen, Bondo, it's, it's you know, hashtag justice for Bondo. He needed those Switching kills. I, I, we had it. We had the dream alive. And Bondo Bondo killed the dream. That's it's it. It's fine. You know, 19 and 12. What's that? What's the KPR looking like on that? Oh, let me get my calculator out. <laughs> 1.58 KPR for Chris Allen. You don't need the 20, it's sir. You're you're a okay where you are. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean Bondo as well. 11 to 2 as well. He's been holding his own. Uh, you know, finding some really great trade kills. He's doing a good job baiting his teammates. And you know, I say that like a joke, and it is kind of a joke, but it's also a really important skill to have. Like knowing when to use your teammates' positioning and body to create space for yourself to bob off. And he's been doing a phenomenal job of that this game. And you know, even sitting at the middle of the scoreboard, his 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 presence and impact is is not to be understated. Yeah, absolutely. And as we see this setup come in from Keanu on this attacking side, we see CSM just try and respond with a very simple mid take, but Savo, Savo, Savo. Oh my we gotta gosh. calm down with that. I don't, I don't know how to explain what just happened. Just like 17 people just like, oh, come on, Bondo. Okay, all right, all right, all right, settle down. All right. Bondo v Lotus, 1v1 for all the marbles here. There we go. He goes into his own shock dart. It's like a flash, right? That's yeah. how it works. I, I think so. I think he uh, I think he flashed himself is what happened. That's good. I like that. Yeah, he, flashed, he flashed Lotus. He flashed himself in, got the kill, right? That's, you know, Sova, the infamous flashing initiator. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just that that just a rush out of Savo. He was just like, you know what? I just I'm just going to run it down. Um, <laughs> just I, I couldn't get over that. And then the B take, everyone just happened to die all at once. It felt like there was like one bullet that got shot and ricocheted around the B site like 16 <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah, it was some, uh, it was some Tom and Jerry Looney Tunes type stuff. I get you. Yes. Serious point for Keanu as we see CSM on this force by rush in to A short, Bondo able to take care of the dog, gets a bullet in to Swizz help, and the shock dart, Savo immediately just running running into the attacker Ooh. spawn, able to get to, what a clean shot out of Savo. One enemy remaining. Oosh, only able to find one on the trade, and now it is Lotus, 1v3, to keep the dream alive, able to find Chris M, can't find Savo, and that is it. 13-2 and 13-1, Keanu speed ran their way through this first season opener. That's a absolutely incredible way to start off the next Star League Varsity Premier season. Keanu playing in the West Central Conference and making a statement in this first game of the season. You know, I... I knew this team was going to be strong, but being able to see them perform and put that to the test is is just so exciting to watch. Uh, and I can't wait to see how they carry this momentum forward into next week's series of matches going into the NECC activation on Monday. Nay Star League again back on Wednesday, followed by the first Canadian Red Bull Campus Clutch qualifiers on Saturday. It is going to be a crazy week of games next week. They had a phenomenal showing today, and I am just so excited to see what's next for this team. Yeah, I mean, what a super promising opener, right? Like, if, if you're coming out guns swinging like that, whew, you're going to be a hard team to contend with in the Star League. But, any, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to see some really close games in the upcoming weeks make it, make it a bit more enticing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's always nice to, to see your team win and have a very strong performance, but those close games, those nail biters too, they, they, 
they provide an additional sort of excitement and enjoyment that you just can't get out of a 26-3. I mean, it's a great match to have, and we're very happy to start the season off like that, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season progresses. We do have some pretty tough opponents coming up in the bracket. We'll be going up against Oklahoma Christian University and Maryville University later on uh, in the season, both teams that are uh, ranked, I believe, top five teams in Collegiate Valorant. Um, so it's going to be really, really exciting to see how the Keanu Huskies fare uh, against those top-level rosters, and um, definitely looking forward to seeing what the rest of the season brings. Angel, I do want to thank you for joining me on the broadcast tonight. You were a pleasure to work with, uh, and I'm very happy to uh, have had you here as we presented our first season Valorant game uh, for the fall semester. My name is Shadi Zedihana. Angel, I'd love to pass it off to you to say goodbyes before we take off for the night. Yes, of course. I would love to thank uh, everyone here at Kano Esports for letting me cast over this uh, just absolute like showstopper of a season opener here for the NACE Star League. I'm Ancient Angel. You can find me on Twitter at Ancient Angel with a Y instead of the E in Angel. So that's A N C E I N T A N G Y L. Uh, you know, shameless self plug. I know. No, we'll, but... we'll we'll definitely throw it out on Twitter as well. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah, thank you all so much. I uh, hopefully we'll be back. Absolutely. Uh, for we'll... some for some later matches. Absolutely. You'll see Angel more on the Keanu stream later this season. Thank you so much everybody for tuning into the stream tonight. We look forward to seeing you next week for our Monday NECC esports activation. Have a good night. <laughs>